about my love for Pop-Up Ally. And this week, I am talking to you all about how to set up an actual pop-up box. So, I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to get straight into the tutorial, so let's go. Let's create a new pop-up with Pop-Up Ally. So, I generally tend to create a pop-up and then copy it for each of my content upgrades so that I'm not creating more work for myself than I actually need to be doing. Um, so if you find a pop-up style that works really well with your audience and um, converts really well, I would totally say just copy it and stick with that. Um, I'm going to just create a new pop-up though to show you guys how it all works. So down here at the bottom, inside of Pop-Up Ally Pro, and if you haven't watched last week's video on sort of what Pop-Up Ally is and what the basic settings are, head back over to the blog or the YouTube channel and check that out. So you'll just click the, or check the box, and then you can add as many pop-ups as you want at a time, but I'm just gonna do one. I'm gonna hit Save Changes. And it'll think about it a minute, and then it'll be at the very bottom. And I want to change the name. So, and then you tell it basically, so I'm on this display settings, which is the top one. So basically you just tell it what kind of pop-up this is. Is it gonna be an exit intent, um, a scroll pop-up, a time-delayed pop-up, a click-based pop-up, whatever. So essentially, um, if you're going to have an exit-based pop-up, it's when someone goes up to the browser bar to actually leave your site, that's when it'll pop up. Scroll pop-up is when they start to scroll down your site, it'll pop. And then time delayed, you actually tell it how much time should pass before they um, see it. So if you wanted an instant one, that's what this is set up to do. Negative one seconds. Um is set up to actually disable, but zero seconds would show immediately on load, or you could do 10 seconds or 20 seconds, um, you know, just whatever you want to do there. If you want to do a click-based pop-up with a button, like a lot of mine are, you could click there. And now what you need to do here is see, remember in the last video when I told you that there were some hangups with copying well, if you copy, it copies this exact um, number from the last one. And so that's a little crazy. But we are going to talk about linking it to a button inside your site in another post because that's it's just a horse of a different color. But that's what you would need to do. And this you would need this to link the button to. Um at some point. So what we're actually going to do is an exit intent pop-up. Um, and so I could just click that and basically it just tells me what that is. Um, the rest of this I can just leave alone. Um, and this embedded one, you can actually embed the quote unquote pop-up inside of a page or a post. So if you just wanted to create an opt-in form, you can do it here and then you can embed it. So you just click that button and um, you can in, you know use the short code if you want to and insert it anywhere you want to in the post. So um, that's super, super, super easy. And you'll always want to leave this show thank you page um, as the option because you will set up your thank you page in ConvertKit or MailChimp or whatever you are using. So again, we're doing an exit intent pop-up. Now, something that I have found is that basically I always need to check this show all, show for all posts and pages um, because sometimes it just doesn't work and um, on certain posts and pages. So just go ahead and check that box unless you don't want it to show on certain pages. So um, you can totally play with that. Now, um, you can tell it to disable on mobile devices, disable on desktops. Um, show Now, here is a really awesome thing too, 
is that you can set it to like tell it how many days since the person last viewed your site that they should be able to view that pop up again. So if you notice when I go here on my own website and I go up in the browser bar, it doesn't give me that exit intent pop up because I've seen it in the last 14 days. So, um, you can change this while you're testing. If you'll notice here, it says testing only. So reappear on every new page load, which would basically mean that if I was on my own site and I was on the home page and I went up here, it would pop up. Or if I was on the blog page or this post and I went up here, it would pop up. So you don't necessarily want that to happen because that will irritate your users, which is why this says for testing only. But you can see here that I have mine set to 14 days and that's kind of the default and I always just leave it at 14 days. So um, I leave all of this stuff the same, nothing really to do there. Now what I want to do is go into the style settings and there are some templates. So I scrolled, so I went to style settings and I scrolled all the way back down to where this one is. Um, now, what happens is inside of ConvertKit, which is the system I am using, I go in here and I go to a form. And let's say it was this one right here. I go in and get the embed code. And I put it here. So that's going to be the same with basically any email marketing system you're using. You'll go in, grab the embed code and put it in this HTML box. And you'll want to make sure you do that or the signups will go nowhere. So, um, there are some templates in here. So there are tons. I'm not going to go through them all, but fluid templates has this one before you go, um, circular one, a special offers one, um, and if you scroll down, it sort of follows you so you can see the preview the whole time, which is really nice. Um, a contact form, a freedom guide. So, I mean, you can really play with this all you want to. Then you can also do a blank canvas and add your own elements to each one. Now, I don't necessarily recommend that for those of you starting out with Pop-Up Ally because it can get a little confusing. Not horrible, but um, there are so many good templates in here that I don't think you'll necessarily even need to. So you can sort of pick your template and then you can change all of the um, colors and everything around there. Now, again, here, so here is a template, just the tried and true template, which if you guys notice, this looks exactly like a lead pages box or a lead box or whatever. Um, and so, you know, you can do that inside of here. You can have one that goes all the way across. You can have a full width one, um, simple choice, which is really nice. Um, because you can basically, you can t tell them, like, no, I don't want this really awesome thing and make them kind of feel bad. So then they have to click yes. And then, you know, all of that. So once they click yes, then the buttons would show up for what they do. So an edge to edge one, which is basically just the tried and true edge to edge limitless. Um, so this one's really cool too. Look here. I like the look here one. Um, you can put any image back here. It doesn't have to be you and you can edit all this text and the colors and everything. Here's an ebook one, which is really nice. Um, you can do a video pop-up, which is awesome. You can do just an image. So, you know, maybe you just want an image to pop up for whatever reason. And then you can do a three musketeers. So you, basically what, what happens here is you say, who is your favorite? And obviously that's an example, but like, who is your favorite musketeer? And you design a different page for each one of these options. So when they select, they can go to that page and view whatever you had for them. So maybe you do multiple things on your website and you wanted to create a pop-up that said, Hey, are you interested in branding or web design? And then you could send them to the right place. So there's so many options, but for now I am just going to go with one of these fluid templates 
and I'm going to do the circle just because, you know, I like circles. So essentially, then what you do is scroll down. So you can go through all of these options and change any colors or um, anything like that. So if I go to the background color and change it to yellow, you'll see that there's a little tiny square back here that's a background. So what I might do is even just delete that, which is exactly what happened. It was left blank when I got here. So um, you can sort of change the size. You can change the outer ring. Um, what happens when they click the outer ring, which right now it says nothing, which is awesome. Um, you can tell it to have a different background color. So, you know, maybe I wanted like a light pink, um, a border radius. You can play with all of these settings. You can also, um, if for whatever reason you wanted to move them up or down in this toggle area, you totally can. So here's the inner circle. So maybe I want it to be, um, blue. Oops, that is not what I meant to do. There we go. Um, so you can change colors in there. You can also, here's where you edit your text. I clicked on headline. So um, I would edit, this is what this says here. I would edit that. Same thing, decoration headline. It's got a line under it. So you would go there and change that sub headline would change that. Label, your name would change that. Um, email would change that. Input, name, input, email. So basically, you could leave it all the same if you want to. And then the submit button, you can go in here and change the font um, to whatever you want. You can you know, do whatever you need to do there. You can also change the verbiage on it. So if you wanted it to say something like, um, not click to opt in, opt in. Maybe you want to say yes or yes. Um, you can do that. And then you can also change the hover style and all of that. So basically what happens is if I hit save changes here, it's going to save that as an exit intent pop up for all my pages. So when I go to open up my website, it will have that as an exit intent pop up. Now, it's, it might give me, it might give you some um, errors. Let's see, it said pop up element five. Okay, let's go see what that was. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, it's fine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go in and save changes. Hit OK. Now I have another exit intent pop up in here. So I'm not sure this is going to work considering I do already have one running, but I'm going to try it and see. Nope, it's not going to work because the other one takes precedence. But basically, that's what it would look like. So super easy to do, super easy to play with. And then if I want to delete it, because I do, because I really don't need this here. All I have to do is go up here to um, copy and delete, scroll down to that pop-up, and just hit delete and save changes. It will ask me if I'm sure, and again, okay, and it will delete that particular pop-up. So you can totally play with this, and it can seem really confusing because you have so many if you're like me and have a lot of content upgrades, but, it all basically the basics are create it, tie it to your convert kit or whatever email marketing system you're using campaign, and then um, basically customize it in whatever way you need to do. So super easy and super fun. Now, in another lesson on the blog coming soon, I will talk about how to link the pop-ups to buttons like I do on my site. So definitely stay tuned for that.